I'm a labor economist by training. Um, and what I got interested in in the past few years is uh, how the government uses science and innovation policy um, expenditures on research and development and how that works its way through both to advance science, advance societal impact, but also to create jobs. So what is the biggest question that you're trying to get the answer to? Um, how much should the country spend on basic research? What kind of basic research? And um, where should it be spent? Well, what do you think are the most important areas that the government should spend on research? Are there any particular branches of science that are more worthy of government funding? That's a great question. And Jack Marburger, was the, uh, who was the Bush science advisor, raised that question in 2005. He called for a science of science policy. And he argued that our spending right now, should it be on biotech or nanotech? Should it be on economics or sociology? It's driven by anecdote. It's not driven by evidence. Well, how did they make the decision what to spend it on? I mean, is there some set of values which enables them to determine which type of research is more important than another type? Or is it politics? Uh, what a shock. It is uh, largely driven by pol politics and anecdotes. So um, how do you spend the money on nanotech? Or why were there the big investments in nanotech? Well, I'm, I'm not saying that it wasn't a worthwhile activity, but it was a very well organized uh, group of scientists who pushed for that. Why did we spend it on the Human Genome Project? Again, a very organized set of researchers. So if you have a good lobby, you have a much better chance of getting government funding. What a shock. Okay. That's exactly right. Is the basic culture to play it safe and invest in things that are likely to produce a return? Or are there also a lot of long shots where most likely will produce nothing, but there's a slight chance that they'll produce a lot? That's another great question. So it depends on the agency. So unfortunately, part of what's happened is that Congress has started to think of uh, investing in science as a slot machine. You put money in and you expect success at the end. And yet a very large part of science should be failure. If it were always a success, the private sector should be doing it, not the government sector. Is curiosity a good reason to spend money, like going to the moon or Mars because we're curious? Is curiosity a good expenditure of public funds, or should we spend it on immediate health care, for example? That's exactly right, because there's a limited budget. So what do you spend it on? So I co-chaired the White House interagency group on um, science of science policy. And after two years of looking at the way in which the 17 science agencies made decisions, our White House approved report said the data infrastructure is inadequate for decision making. Is it that they don't have enough data or they don't have coherent enough values to make the decision? Both. That's exactly right. So um, they don't have the models and the tools for, the, for analysis and they don't have the data upon which to build that analysis. So, so let me give you an example. Suppose that we want to spend more on basic chemistry. We cannot tell you how much we currently spend on basic chemistry because it's siloed in different organizations. There's some that's being done at NIH, there's some that's being done at uh, NSF, some that's being done at the Department of Energy, but we have no idea how it is allocated within those agencies. I think we should at least have as good a scientific basis for science and innovation policy as we do for health policy and education policy we know a lot more about how investments work in those areas than we do in innovation policy.